let's do this. So you want to learn off tank, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you've probably seen, uh, you know, off tank. Maybe you've done it once. Maybe you've done it a few times. Uh, but uh, let me put it this way: the off tanking is got it's got one of the highest ceilings. It looks easy on paper. Just stack the mini, and yada yada yada. Uh, but like, it takes. It probably has like the most intricate and most. It, it can become one of the most overwhelming for sure. But I think definitely seeing it action um, will help you. Um, you know. Get the get the process down, what the mentality going in needs to be, and you know I'll be showing you the gear, the champion points, everything you need to run uh, to you know be ready to go into the trial and you know start to attempt to perform to you know what you know true vast off tank is, and that's you know you're you're the giga Chad, you know I I off tanked a lot. I probably put in like maybe. Um, I think in the span of three months, like, I don't know, uh, like a ridiculous amount of runs. Um, I, I can't even count at this point because I would look at ESO logs and you'll just see like a hundred and or something like something to that degree. And each one has multiple clears. So I definitely do have the receipt for what I can do. But um, I personally don't feel like I've, I've reached the very uh, peak of what I can do but I could definitely show you how to how to try to get there and uh, I think uh, the the biggest thing you'll learn when you're off tanking is speed is your best friend uh, for sure because uh, you'll you'll think that oh I'm an off tank tank is in the name and you're gonna think why am I wearing medium armor they're gonna ask you to wear medium armor like PA and war machine and you're gonna think, hey, um, I'm gonna be very, very squishy, but I'm gonna show you exactly why you're not gonna be. And if anything, you'll actually be more tanky than in heavy armor. And it'll definitely, you know, I'll remove that feeling of uneasiness from wearing these sets. So, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with some uh, some video. Just take a look, and I'll I'll will do my best to explain exactly what I'm doing. This group here gets about uh, it was like a 350 or something like that, and you can see C's in there. There you go, perfect clip. Yeah, and it's not a perfect run, but this group is uh, relatively good. And I'll be uh, doing my best here to explain to you how what to expect in your runs because this this group uh, for most people's standards is pretty pretty damn good but um yeah so just go ahead and watch and um this is a couple patches ago but it'll still it'll still get the job done nothing's changed i've got the same champion points so um so at the beginning you're like you know doing nothing i mean just just keep your up times up you can see i have that pa tracker at the top i have a new one i use now but uh you know i'll get to that later but uh you know just keep your up times up uh, you as a Necro in particular, you're usually Necro OT, you'll see my abilities on my bar. I'll go further in depth in them, but right now I am applying Vigor for my PA and Empower to give people more damage on their light attacks. And um, yeah, for the most part, just keep your uptimes up. You're basically not doing anything here. I mean, just, yeah, you're vibing. So, you know, we keep going, we keep going, and this is when it's going to start for you as the off tank. This is... Um, Immediately, uh, you can learn something here. So you guys know, uh, you know, in uh, Asylum, uh, you get the Storm of the Heavens mechanic, where you get lobbed attacks. Well, here it's coming. It's coming now. So uh, look at what I do exactly. So just pay attention. Look at my HP in particular, and just my general safety. So I didn't get, I didn't have any immediate danger, and you'll see why. So basically, uh, when Storm of the Heavens happens. If you are close to the center of the AoE, you don't have to be in it, but you can be next to it, like I am right now. If you're close to the center, you will not get a lobbed attack on you. The same attack that everybody else in the whole arena is receiving, you will not get it. So, meaning the only hits you're getting hit by are the AoEs coming through the ground. As you can see right there, there's one running at me right now. That one is a ground AoE that I have no control over, but... Uh, basically, you know, uh, you can see I took one right there, but I didn't even get hit by it. So your safest place to be is actually close to ohms, not like far away in the room, on top of someone's spot. Like, no, up against them because um, you will receive some of the least damage in this moment. And all you need to do is like while you're waiting here is just just scythe. 
take a hit, you'll see like I'm full HP again. Scythe, Scythe again. Scythe maybe one more time. And you can see I just took no damage. And you'll see me do this throughout the fight, especially at the beginning. But, um, you know, here's where the fun begins, right? Uh, you're tanking Lothus. So this is going to be in a plus one or a plus two. Uh, on zero, uh, you know, it's uh, it's zero. So if you if you do t off tank a zero, you just you just manage your uptimes. But plus one and two is where the off tank really shines, and Lotus in particular. So Lotus will always spawn in that back. You can already see this little sword. He will always spawn in the back right of where I'm staring right now. So you can see I immediately turn around as soon as Storm of the Heavens happens here, and Lotus will spawn on the back right when I turn around. So watch. So he's in the back right right now. I'm about to taunt him here, and boom. So he teleported away. I'm going to need to re-taunt him again because uh, he doesn't uh, obey my uh, range taunt. So I had to taunt him, but he always spawns there. That's the that's the biggest thing to learn. Also, uh, sorry about the UI. Uh, I'll try to explain to you why I need all this on my screen. It looks like I've got a million things like uh, on it, but they're very important if you want to really... Um, have a, I guess, a fine understanding of what's going on in this trial, especially as the off tank. You're a very important role. So um, one other thing to note here about when Lotus spawns is that he will, 90% of the time, he'll teleport away. And I do have a clip where he doesn't. And uh, But most of the time, he will always immediately teleport away here as soon as I, I try to get the taunt on him. And what... Um, what I do right now is, uh, if you don't, if you didn't know, it's uh, I can already I already know where Lotus is. He's on the left of the room. I know. I just watched this clip, and you know I saw him move. But even before he he moved there, like in that moment, I knew where he moved because when he teleports away, he leaves a trail of of green smoke, and it leads you to the direction he's gonna be. So right now, I I saw the trail move left, and at that moment, I instantly turned left. You can see I am already looking at him. So. I'll keep showing you this throughout the fight, but that's something to note. He makes that trail, and you'll know where he is. And sometimes you can even use audio cues. Like, you can hear his voice on the left of you and things like that. Just use all your, you know, general senses to understand where he's going to teleport. Because when you start solo interrupting this, you're going you're gonna to need that. Because as soon as he teleports, he's going to bolt uh, right, right there sometimes. So, uh, yeah. So that's uh, we're at the start of the fight, and it's probably a lot to take in. But just know he tell he spawns in the same spot. He you will always know where he teleports if you're paying attention uh, to the visuals. You'll see the smoke. And uh, one other thing that uh, you're you may have noticed that I do is that as soon as he teleports, I tab target him. So if you don't know what tab targeting is, it basically highlights the enemy, and that will allow me to very easily interrupt him through ohms in particular because I'm going to be stacking him on the tail like he is now. So I need to be able to hit him and know that I won't be hitting Ohms with my interrupt ability. So I immediately, whenever he teleports, you always have to re-tab target. So uh, let's pay attention here. Oh, also, I guess something to note with this fight, with this group, is that Felms is spawning very early. So he's about to spawn now. As you can see, I'm already ready in his position, basically. He always spawns on the front left of the room in the direction I'm looking at right now. He spawns next to Ohms on his left. And he should spawn any second now. Here we go. There's films. So just know that they always spawn in the same spots. You shouldn't uh, worry about them spawning anywhere else. And uh, yeah, so uh, here we are. So we got Lothus and films. These are going to be your two main guys. The, the guys you need to keep uh, keep taunted. Um, so let's see. Where do we where do we start here? Let's let's keep uh, looking at Lothus, right? So his main mechanics is blast and his bolts. So these are two very important timers that you need to pay attention to because um, they will impact on how you move around the arena. So whenever Lotus channels his blast, he's stuck. You can't move him. So if he's in the back of the room and you know he's going to do blast, why even bother, like, I don't know, like moving around or like whatever, especially if you're trying to get the solo interrupt because if he's not moving, you're going to need to make sure you need to stick around his general vicinity. So here we go again. We got another example of him teleporting here. Uh, so we see his trail. I Hopefully, oh, is my quality low? I think I lowered it. Here we go. Does it look better? <laughs> Sorry, I think it was 4DP. So so hopefully you're able to see this trail here. So pay attention to the Lotus, right? Look at the trail. And 
it was super quick. It's probably really hard to see with the quality of the stream, but he moved to my right. And I, I know he's on my right. So my top priority right now as solo interrupter off tank is to interrupt him here. And then he's going to do blast. So watch, I get the interrupt and then blast. And blast is on me. Okay, so if you ever get blast on you, never outrun it initially. Because if you ever outrun Cone, uh, you've probably experienced this before. If you have gotten hit by Lotus, Lotus's Cone and outranged it before it hits you, is that he will recast it on someone else. So uh, the plan is you take one hit and then you move because that means he will not recast his cone. So this is exactly what I do. I take one blast, move out. As soon as I move out of that, I'm moving to position. So uh, here, I'm going to pull up a picture here. So there's a very nice info uh, graph, uh, graphic of, uh, of this exact situation. Uh, you on like you have to stack Lotus. Uh, it's very important because he, he's a range ad and he doesn't he does he's not as easy to position as a melee ad because a melee guy will just stick to you like glue. While a range guy, you need to outrange him. He's got he's got the you know he's got the high ground. He's got the distance. So uh, let me pull up this picture real quick. Uh, so we'll we'll explain the basic idea. Um, so yeah, stack stack Lotus, stack Lotus, right? You know, I mean, it sounds sounds. Sounds simple, but it's honestly one of the more tricky things. You'll know that when whenever you have uh, someone, someone who's really good at stacking Lotus, Lotus will get super cleaved. He will just die before, like um, like in in a minute and a half. So, so you see this picture, yeah? Okay, so we made this a while back, or at least I helped see uh, adjust it a little bit. But uh, you know, it gives you all the rules. I'll I'll be putting all these in the channel, so you're free 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 to save them or have them somewhere in in your memory. But uh, it it explains to you exactly what you need to be doing, how to stack load this. It also shows you kind of like the lines you need to follow. So these are general guidelines, in particular the load this one, right? You can see he spawns back left of the room. Okay, just be direct opposite. So. You know, uh, I think we've all we've all been to school, and we understand that, you know, how to make a line. So, always make a line between Lotus and where you want to stack him, and then you want to be directly opposite of that. So, Lotus and the boss in particular, the boss in particular, will never be at the same spot all at all times. So, um. So you can't just use the same position to stack them perfectly without like fail because ohms will will be slightly shifted to the left or slightly shifted to the right. So um, what you'll see me do here as I'm stacking Lotus is that uh, I basically kind of know the general position I need to be in, but also I'm making sure that like I'm not exactly stare like looking right at him, but I already have a line made between me and him. And I'm going to the back of the wall, and I should have bounced back quick because what happened here is Lotus is really close to the tank now. So uh, you'll see me readjust this in just a moment. And if um, for whatever reason you need to readjust Lotus, as you can see here, I just bashed him backwards. So whenever he does his uh, his range interrupt, you 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 can bash him to to make him uh, slightly move over. And you can see I very quickly uh, re readjusted Lotus here. So. Uh, in the event that Lothus teleports, he doesn't drop his puddle on on the tank. So um, I guess that's something to note as well. The puddle that he drops is whenever he teleports. So you don't want to be dropping it on top of uh, like the tank uh, or dropping it in like a very inconvenient spot. And uh, if it does get dropped in an inconvenient spot, that may have been because you took too long to stack Lotus, or you might have moved him out by accident. But most of the times, um, like you'll you'll probably get his like behavior down a little bit. So you know, Lotus is in a relatively good spot here. He might be a little bit further towards group, but honestly, it's okay. It's better than I think the puddle getting dropped on the tank. So um, yeah, so we got. We got his positioning right. Always make a line. Uh, just keep. Uh, let's keep looking here. He, Lotus will teleport in like now after this bash, uh, uh, in a second. So, come on, teleport. There you go. He teleported. He's on the left side of the room, and I immediately tap targeted him. And I'm going opposite of the room right now. You can see I'm already opposite of him right now, and he's pretty much where he needs to be right right now. There we go. Here we go. He's at the center. So, 
opposite of him there. So use this wall here. This picture, uh, once again, uh, we pull it up. It's you can see I'm basically uh, if you see the the L on the right side where it's where the OT is on the right uh, with uh, the 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 Lothus green, um, we make a line to the left. So you can see it's kind of touching that wall. And then you look at this video here, and where lo and behold, I'm near this wall. <laughs> so there you go. So they they are really good reference points to be at. But uh, they're not always set in stone. You'll just adjust slightly sometimes. We'll look at another port here. Okay, he ported to the back of the room. So uh, once again, so you can see, make a line. You go around this general vicinity here. You can see I'm like right on top of C here. So, and then you bounce back. So one thing about going this far back is that you're going to need to kind of do a like a bounce motion. Uh, if I, hold on, let me open up a thing here. So if like, let's say this is the wall where, where I went right there, and this is, uh, this is Ohms. So if I were to stay on this wall here, Lothus will end up about here, and I want him over here, right? So the reason I go the, as far as I do is because I want to make sure 100% that his range attack does not stall him, because Lothus's range attack is basically, um, it's... Like if this is if this is Lothus uh, here, like that circle, this is his uh, where he his movement. This is as far as like he will move. But the thing is though, his range attack is even bigger. So uh, even though he will stop his movement here, he will light attack you from even further. So meaning you need to outrun this even more. Like. Even though he's gonna like, if you were to let's say stand here, um, for example, uh, where his range will hit you, he will light attack you and then walk again. Even though you, most ads, the way they work is they light attack and then stop. That's their maximum range. That's their mas maximum walking distance. But Lothus, he doesn't like that for some reason. So he will range attack you from even further. So you want to stack him fast. So you need to go far fast. And that's why I tend to go to the immediate wall very quickly. And what I'll do is as soon as he's walking into Ohms's where I want him, basically. So I want him like towards the back of the tail a little bit. I basically, I go like this. I'm walking, 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 hit the wall, bounce back. That's, uh, that's what you need to do quickly. Because as soon as I bounce back, he will most likely already be there. Um, you kind of just have to do that um, or like learn to do that as you do the fight a little more. Uh, you can see I kind of messed it up a couple times here. I do feel like Ohms, for whatever reason, he might be a little too further out. But whatever, for the most part, um, like you can you can see me kind of do it. I think I do it a little too slow here, uh, but uh, I do have some more clips of me doing it a little properly. So you kind of you can kind of see I kind of bounce off the wall. I don't really take a moment to pause for too long, and he kind of is where I want him. And you see what I'm going to do here? I bashed him towards the group. So he's just a little bit further in now, which is a little nicer because I won't drop an AOE on the tank. And when I'm kiting uh, when with an AOE underneath the, the boss, like it is now, this Lotus Poison, I use these sides here. I, uh, you can see I, I'm not on top of anyone in particular, and Healer just stays a little bit further back. So yeah, uh, I'm still mostly talking about Lotus here. But uh, that's going to be your biggest prog, I think, um, in terms of positioning the minis. He's definitely the most difficult to control because he's a range ad. He's, he's, uh, you know, he's not nice. So we'll, we'll look at another one, right? I've got, a, I've got a second clip. And let's just pay attention to all the things I said about Lotus, right? So here we go. So, okay, uh, here we go. We're starting here. So he lands. Storm the heavens. Get ready after this. Storm the heavens and look where I am. You see where I am? Uh, close to the close to the thing, and I'm I'm starting to move because um, I want to I want to puncture the pro protector just to give it that that minor breach, and that'll make people kill it a little faster. It's just some little thing you can do to, you know, um, speed things up a little bit. But Lotus, same idea. He just spawned in the back. And you remember what I mentioned about him not teleporting right away? So he doesn't commonly do it, but he did it here. So when he doesn't teleport right away, I make sure to stay. Because as soon as, like, three seconds later, he's going to teleport. And uh, there we go. So this is probably the worst case scenario that can happen. It'll drop an AoE run on the group. 
All right, so um, I'm solo interrupting, so I need to make sure I'm in the vicinity. So I'm just going to be in the middle of the room, kind of. I get the interrupt, boom, run. Start running ASAP. I immediately turn around, and guess where I am? Directly opposite of him right now. And bounce off the wall here, and he's about underneath the boss. So there you go, wham, just like that. He's under the boss. We're going to look at another port here. Uh, let's see, we got... He teleports right... Right after this cone, he's going to teleport. Sorry, there's a lot on the screen. Jesus, my UI is ugly. <laughs> but uh, well, where did he go? He's right behind me. So I'm going to need to get his bash. I got his bash. I'm going to go opposite of him. Going opposite. Here we go. Near this wall here, kind of. And I got him about where I want him. So, okay, we're good here. So, uh, yeah, I think you get the idea. Always make a line between Lothus and Olms, and you'll never miss. And the thing that's making it so easy for me to do that is my gear. So what I'm wearing is is uh, definitely helping me out a lot. So powerful assault. So this is a medium armor set, and this will give buffs to your, to your teammates. So if you don't know, medium armor, its skills... Uh, they have a huge um, like speed buffs, like you just sprint faster. You have reduced costs on your stam, and things that will make you a lot more mobile, mobile, and a little more cost efficient on your stam stam abilities. And um, in particular, the biggest thing I'm wearing is the mythic Ring of the Wild Hunt. So if you don't know what that does, it speeds you up, and it'll give you like um 16 or I don't know something like a pretty substantial speed increase uh this definitely makes your gameplay a lot more uh enjoyable because you're able to just do these like very fast movements to stack the minis and get back to where you need to be and things like that so um you know war machine they'll ask you to usually wear this but uh yeah for the most part uh yeah this is all medium gear and my traits so uh you know you'll see i i try to go well fitted i did have infused this was back in the day so i haven't never really changed it but with well fitted i'll be able to sprint a lot more and my roll dodges will be cheaper so i don't have to worry as much about my stam and um but yeah so in general your armor traits uh, i highly recommend well fitted and your jewelry if you can i don't do it personally i'm very cheap and I still manage, but I still have robust. <laughs> so um, the biggest thing that will definitely make the biggest impact, I think, I think, is your enchant uh, on your jewelry. The, the reduced stamp cost that'll make you very like allow you to go very fast, but also you will be able to dish out a lot more PA uptimes because you won't have to manage your vigor uh, spamming as much as you might normally uh you'll notice that if you don't have these enchants um the reduced feet cost then your stam drain is going to be ridiculous and as for your weapons and all that um uh, you know as any other class infused on the back bar and your enchant can be whatever they ask you but it's no, i just have crusher uh it doesn't really matter and as for your you know weapons this can be well fitted uh it was infused at the time and uh, what else we got? We got the absorb stam because why not? It, they won't make a huge impact on your gameplay, in my opinion. Uh, the same goes for the armor, the armor uh, enchants. You can do all prismatic. That's the one I would recommend, but that gets very expensive. So honestly, you could do like a mix of like I don't know, like either full stam or some mag or some health. It won't really matter, honestly, in my opinion. Maybe some eight health, maybe health. It feel a little more tanky. That might that might make you feel a little better. So food. Uh, will also make your gameplay a lot um, a lot more enjoyable because you'll notice uh, your resources get kind of low sometimes and you're playing a necro at, who I normally don't use balance just because I like the armor, the beckoning armor you get. So the way I manage my resources or Zorgas. So this is a very expensive food for some people. This is 20k gold per. So, but uh, take a look at the... Um, the you know the what you get out of it max health health recov and then you get stam and magic recovery and a pretty substantial amount that is insane because well most of the times in the trial you're not blocking and you're just running around spamming things so this recovery makes a world of difference but if you don't want to spend the 20k you can do bewitched like everybody else does and it should do you just as fine i'd say but honestly this recov is so nice 
As for the Mundus, the Atro, because you have so much um, cost reduction for Stam stuff that you need to balance that out a little bit because as a Necro, you are casting Empower. Um, you're casting Empower a lot more uh, uh, than, like, or you're trying to, which is, a, it, that's a mag ability. So you're going to need something to sustain that. So you use the Atro. Uh, you'll see on the top left, that's where I have my skills. You can see Empower right there in the middle. It's the one with the hand coming out of the ground. And it's one of the main buffs. And Vigor right next to it. Those are my two buffs. And uh, those will drain you very heavily if you spam them a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go more in depth in this in just a second. But since I was just talking about that. So yeah, the Atro, very important. Uh, it'll help you sustain a lot. And same goes for your ghost. Um, your ghost has a tank, which is right up there, uh, right here. This boy right here, the, the Giga Chad. Uh, <laughs> so he's he's really nice. He will constantly heal you through the fight, but also as a necro, you get the passive where if you have a a uh, you know necro like summon summon active, whatever the wording is, they'll give you more resources or more resources uh, just for having him up. So you always maintain him, and uh, your resources will be looking very crisp. So uh, let's go Let's go back to the video real quick. So yeah, my uh, the, the reason I mentioned my gear is my, for the most part, the, game, the gameplay here, um, I am moving, I'm super nimble, and my resources are never really low. I mean, like, you just saw me roll there like twice, and I dropped like, what, 4K stam? Dang. Okay, so that's that's pretty that's pretty nice. That's pretty cost cost efficient. So, I think I've talked him enough about Lothus. He he's the most complicated one, but uh, you know just uh, move fast. And if you're solo inter interrupting, you need to be aware of his mechanics as much as you can. If you're not solo interrupting, just worry about stacking him, and you'll you'll notice that your group starts to have more damage on on Lothus, and also they will just, I don't know, they'll feel a lot more safer because they'll they'll know where Lothus is. He won't be in the back of the room. He won't be like, I don't know, somewhere in the middle, annoying them somehow, just existing. So yeah, so let's talk about Felms because he's been running around the room and I haven't really said anything about him. So with this uh, these clips, I don't have a video of me um, Heavily holding him, where in the you know by the boss, by the boss's tail. But you can, you'll 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 notice that I will be very close to keeping him there. So just uh, just watch. So here we go, right? Lotus spawn, yada yada yada, blah blah blah. So this group here, we just push the second jump. So when the second jump happens, films will spawn. So let's say you're doing a prog, your group is is starting for the first time. Lotha, uh, Felms will not spawn for maybe like a little while later, maybe two, three minutes in. Uh, with this group, he's about to spawn a minute or something. So, uh, so he'll spawn a little slower. But like I mentioned before, Felms spawns here on the left side or on my right. There he is. Hello, buddy. And he is a melee. So, you know, things to note about his damage. He Anytime he light attacks you, he bleeds you and he maims you. So don't worry about the maim. That's like whatever mames make you do less damage you're a tank you do negative damage to begin with you heal the boss so um so yeah uh, don't worry about his damage he's honestly he hits like a noodle um so the biggest thing with films is yeah again he's a melee you can stack him very easily like i could just be standing on his tail and he will just oh, he'll just obey me he'll just stay there i move an inch he follows me yada 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 so try to be relatively positioned on his tail i won't be here because i know this group will kill the boss before Felms enrages. And uh, that's, I guess, something I forgot to mention. If you don't know, the minis enrage in three minutes. So that's why it's very important for you to be super fast at stacking Lotus, but also be aware of your movement. You don't want to be moving around too much, so you can cleave Felms. So you'll see me moving around like an idiot, because, again, I Felms won't enrage in this group. But... If I were to be in a regular group, I would keep him. I would be a lot less monkey and moving around like zigzag all over the place as much as I am. But you'll you'll notice here that if I wanted to, I could stack him. So just just be aware of that. Like right now, for example, I just stack Lotus. I all I had to do is literally beeline to the middle and Felms is stacked and easy peasy, right? But uh, for the most part, I'm just giving people buffs. I'm going left and right, yada yada yada. But 
like um I, I think um, this is probably the easiest ad you can uh, you can deal with. Uh, quick tip here is when as soon as Felms jumps away to your healer, you can taunt a film retaunt Felms right over here. Watch, I'm gonna I'm gonna retaunt him at where the healer is on this side. You see how the tank healer's back there? Well, I just taunted. He's gonna jump away. Easy peasy. How many times have you off tanked and you're like, oh my god, where's where's Felms? Oh, it's smacking my group healer in the back of their room. Well, if you just um, if you just uh, see Felms jump away, like in a in a second or two, he's about to be right, technically right next to you, right? He's gonna be right there. There he is. And then he jumps back and boom. And mission accomplished. Felms has been taunted. That's probably the biggest issue I think off tanks have. Uh, sometimes is that they'll they'll just mm, ju they just won't retaunt films he's gonna jump around the room and then he's gonna start smacking your healer and and then it gets chaotic and maybe the healer dies because of that i don't know um so yeah whatever i i think films uh for the most part is again super easy to manage just get that one taunt don't move around too much you're chilling. He doesn't really do anything to you. Same with Lotus. He doesn't do too much damage to you. If you get the cone, just block it, move out, yada, yada, yada. But the name of the game is stacking. You're doing that with speed. You're doing that with very, like, just efficient movement. You will never see me, like, be up against Lotus unless I know that I need to be there for whatever reason. Like, you'll, you'll, I'll just be around him. I'll never be breathing on him because if I'm breathing on Lotus, I'm either keeping him outside on purpose like i am right now or i am trolling so <laughs> uh so you always need to make sure lotus is getting stacked like no matter what lotus sports you restack and even if film starts to follow you out i feel like getting lotus stacked is number one priority because if you guys uh like have done vast before lotus is probably the hardest one to kill sometimes because He's, like, going to be out in Narnia sometimes. And Felms, like, I mean, all you got to do is taunt him. And then he stands still. And then everybody just burns him there. He jumps away. He's going to come back 100% as long as you have that taunt. So Lothus, definitely number one priority. Um, okay. So let's talk about something that can happen with these two guys. So sometimes it's going to feel very, like... Uh, overwhelming and you're like oh god I gotta stack Lotus but films I gotta keep him in I gotta keep him in cleave so what uh, what needs to happen um, this is probably something that your Rayleigh's can do but honestly I feel like it's 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 hard it's, it's a tough one so what uh, what you want to have happen is uh, if you want to get these timings correctly where protector goes down and then Felms is walking in. That's like the the god tier scenario because you know what happens if Protector dies and Felms just came in. Guess what? You have ten seconds to cleave Felms for free. And what tends to happen in most groups is that Felms will come in, like come in. Protector comes up. Everyone gets off the boss to go on the Protector. Felms is over there just like smacking you, and you're just taking that damage for free. And that guy's taking like negative damage. And that just happens because, um, like, your raid lead, like, what they could do is just just take a break for one protector if they wanted to, honestly. Like, in a regular group. And I'll be like, if I was a raid lead, I'll be like, focus films and then get the protector. Because what will happen is... You hate to see it. If you do damage to films, films jumps away, and then you start targeting the protector, what will happen is the protector will die, and guess what? Films is coming in, and voila! The, you just solve the you just solve the problem because now every time from then on, as long as no one's dying, I guess that's something to note. Is that the like films would always guarantee get cleaved, and then suddenly you have more damage on films. I I I don't think this is something that you'll be able to control all the time because sometimes you'll be with the raid lead and you'll be like, hey, you know this one this one guy called Vortex who you know whatever he told me that. You know, you should you should uh, hit the protect or hit films and then the protector because then this will happen. And they're like, "Who's that vortex guy? What the heck? What does he know? I don't know. <laughs> Nothing." But <laughs> like, whatever. So, okay, uh, that's whatever. Uh, I think, I, I I think um, if you you know if you've already gotten this far and you already knew all about most of these things, you're probably more interested in how you become a really good 
like the the OT, like the guy who solo interrupts, who stacks perfectly, who gets good uptimes. So uh, that will come, I think, um, with practice. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, like anybody ever says, uh, we're gonna go to the third clip here, but uh, practice is the biggest thing. But I think having an understanding of the fight, how how minis the minis behave is key. We're gonna look at this clip, this third clip. So you're gonna see it play out just like the other ones. And just pay attention. And just know that when you are solo interrupting, you're not perfect. You're gonna miss one. Maybe you're gonna miss two. Maybe you're gonna miss all of them. <laughs> so just uh just be aware of that. Uh that, that will happen, especially if you're learning. And if you're learning how to solo interrupt, just have that have that DPS interrupter and uh, when you get confident enough, tell them Hey, I'm ready. So let's let's start with the let's let's pay attention. I have crushing shock on my back bar, and that's the blue ability, the one that looks like a pitchfork. That'll help me solo or that'll help me range interrupt Lotus here. And as usual, he spawned in the back. He teleported away. His trail move left, and where does he happen to be? Right there, right in front of my face. So, okay, pay attention to the add-ons. This is gonna be the biggest thing as you're solo interrupting. Ten seconds on bolts, right dead center at the middle of the screen. What what do I do with this information? Okay, so I know he's not gonna cone right away, and I know his only other mechanic other than his light attack and like bolts, like those are the only like th those are like the three main mechanics that will ever keep Lotus stationary. So if I know none of those are gonna go out, especially bolts, if I'm the solo interrupter, interrupter it's time to move. As soon as I got that taunt, I sprint. I'm sprinting. And here's, an, here's a good scenario right here. Look at how far Ohms is to the right. Holy crap. I can literally beeline through the middle. So from here, I'm going to be going about where C is right now. Uh, she's right there in the back. Look at that. So I'm going to go right there. And look at that. Do you see where, Lo do you see where Lotus is? Pretty much right there on the tail. I bounce. I should bounce off here. There you go. Bang. Lotus is right there. And, um, yeah, I mean, perfect. Bada boom. Pay attention to the timers again. Somebody's getting coned. We got Cryotech getting, getting beamed. And as you can see, it says bolt soon. So no matter what, right after blast, it will always be the interrupt. Watch. Just as soon as, uh, as soon as it's over, I'm right there, ready to bash. Boom. He got bashed. Get wrecked, kid. Uh, so, um... Uh, you know, I got it. I got the I got the interrupt. All right, 11 seconds. Here come the balls again. So this is gonna be nonstop throughout the fight. And you are t a tanky boy, and you can see that I went to, like even though Ohms is jumping, you can eat these jumps like a champ. Watch. What? How much was that? 9k. Why did I take that much damage? I'll tell you why in just a moment. But just keep watching the fight. I got I got the interrupt here. I blocked the stomp or the jump. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Lotus is stacked. We're chilling. Oh, as I can see here, our main tank just grabbed the Lotus by accident. So I'm gonna wait on this inner on this this taunt here. Alright, keep looking at the timers. What do we got here? Kite soon. Okay, cool. Whatever. Uh we'll deal with it. Blast and bolts. So at this point, he's probably gonna cast his interrupt here. Boom. There you go. It usually uh, prioritizes the interrupt when they're both evenly timed, and then into blast. Oh or no, he ported away, and now he's gonna blast. He just ported, and it's on camel. Camel got it. Uh, get wrecked. Uh, so, uh, whatever. Uh, so I'm still focusing on the interrupts, but at this moment here, I know that Ohms has just jumped twice, and you know what that means. Here comes the other guy, the other films, the robot. The the uh, is this the one who is always sad? I forget, but yeah, the, the, the these two guys are always sad robots. So you know you're getting slapped by the noodles, and I have just dragged Lotus back in. I got the interrupt. Cool. I'm at the opposite side, as you can see. I'm about I'm uh, opposite him, and there we go. I got him where about I want him. You can see right underneath the base of his tail. That's a pretty good spot. Like I I'd say you never want to have him like by the axe. You never want to have him too close to the tank. We got him there. Cool. Okay. Keep paying attention to how I interrupt here. So we got pa uh, pastels getting coned. Three seconds to bolts. Okay, he's probably gonna bolt as soon as the the cone is done. Okay, there we go. We got the bash. Boom. Cool. We're chilling. Films is on me. He's stacked. He can he can stay there some more if I wanted him to, but you know I don't care because again this group will not have to worry about that. But you know with your groups you might you you will definitely have to uh, most likely and. 
So I just ran to the wall. Lotus is stacked again. Beautiful. I've got the interrupt. Amazing. Kona's going out. We're chilling. Lotus is stacked. Thelms, I still have taunt on him. I should be running to the middle to get the taunt. Oh no, Camel got slapped. Uh, well, he didn't die. No one will ever die, but their damage will die. Because basically, if they ever get maimed, they lose 50% of their damage. So just be, be aware of that. You don't want your DPS to get hit. So, um, you know, we'll give him that L right there and we'll keep going. Here we go. Bolt soon. As soon as this, boom, get that, got that bash. There you go. Easy. We just, timers, these timers, like, they're just amazing. You're just like, why, do you, why would you ever want to play on console? Just kidding, I probably... But uh, <laughs> you, could, you could definitely do this on console, I think. But you'll have to be a lot more aware. Okay, here we go. Pastel's getting coned. Bolts. Boom. Interrupted. Range interrupted. Never walk into that poison AoE. There's been so many times that I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to bash him with my shield bash. And then I die. And I'm like, yeah, that wasn't the best choice. Just range interrupt if you can hit him. And just keep in mind, again, every time he ports... Tab target him. You will make your life. Your life will be so easy getting this interrupt here. So, yeah, we're we're chilling. And Lotus just died. Look at that. He just got cleaved. So look at the time on Films right now. A minute twenty. Dang. Films is um ninety percent. Probably more healthy than he should be. That's that's my bad. Uh, like if this was any other group, we're we're in the danger zone right now. This guy is very healthy. We got about a minute and a half. A, a minute minute 35 before he enrages so um yikes so this is uh this is where uh it, it gets easy lotus is dead so like you don't need to stack you don't need to do anything this is when you start going crazy on your uptimes if you weren't already start giving him power start giving vigor everything you can possibly give out because this is where it's the easiest time for you to give people buffs and it's uh you know just you can you're you're the most free person whenever films jumps so right here, so Felms, he's coming to me. So normally, again, in a, in, a, in a regular group, you should be going straight to where Olms' tell will be because I need to keep him there so he gets cleaved. Again, this group will not have to worry about that, but normally I would have to stay there. So just be aware of that. I would have been keeping him under the tail. And here we go. So these add-ons here, you see how it says bolts in 20 seconds? Normally, it's always every 15. But... With the, the way the timer is working here, that's going to tell you uh, as soon as Lotus is getting up, he's going to do his, his uh, interrupt. And, uh, you know, you're, uh, some of you might not notice where, where, where's Lotus. Well, Lotus, whenever he goes down, he, he takes a knee. As you can see, he's like underneath the tail right now. And he will always be where he died. Same goes with Thumbs. If you ever are lost, you're like, oh, no, where's the mini? Where's the mini? Just remember, where did I kill him? Where did he die? So... For me, you'll see I start staring at his tail because I know he's underneath right now. I need to get the interrupt as soon as it's up. Here we go. Any second now. And one. And I'm looking right at him. Boom. Bashed him. Easy peasy. We just saved the day. We just got the interrupt. Nobody died. Sick. And yeah, just he will always spawn where he died. So sick. Uh, awesome. Um, again, Thelms is in the back. I could sack him. I just didn't. And whatever. Like... Uh, films again if your raid lead told you to f if your raid lead tells your dps to focus them you'll notice he burns very quick so um there shouldn't be any worries um as long as you do smarter movements that i did here keep stop moving around like crazy like a chicken with your head cut off like i am here and keep films still and just be very fast. You'll stack Lotus very quickly every time. You stack him quick, films will always be in if you stack him quick. If you take too long to stack Lotus, films will run over to you, hit you, hit you, hit you. Okay, I'm going to go stack him. I'm going to go stack films. And I'm gone. Films just jumped away. And you don't want that to happen. So um, uh, let's see. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to explain to you why Why am I so tanky? Why? Why... Like, am I just, what are my defenses? So last time I checked, I believe my resistances are 23K. And you're like, are you in a tank or are you just like a makeshift DPS? So yes, I am a tank, but uh, like 23K is low because the cap is like around 33, right? Which is like, you're like, oh yeah, I'm getting all my mitigation. S uh, sick, sick. So here we go.
So let's look at the seals again, right? Why, why am I using these? Okay, here we go. We got beckoning armor because, well, that's your armor buff. You want to have the resistances that you're not going to have. Like maybe your warden won't give it to you. And uh, do you see that ability? It looks like a dude who's got red eyes. This one right here. Um, so that ability is the lewd. So this is why wearing medium makes you tanky. Look, look at the description of it. So it gives you major evasion. And what does Major Evasion do? It reduces the damage from area t attacks by 20% for 20 seconds. So, uh, you know, if you've done this fight uh, enough times, like, what are you getting hit by? Like, well, what, what are you getting hit by here? Ohms, jumps are AoEs. Lotus, bolts, the, the light attacks he does to you, AoEs. Like, if you, if you notice, whenever I get hit by Lotus's light attack, it does a little AoE around my feet. There we go, there we go. So you see that AoE forming underneath my feet? That's Lotus's light attack. So, boom, damage reduced. <laughs> you said, that's a light attack? Oh, that's direct damage, right? And I'm like, nah, it's an AoE. <laughs> so, um, okay, cool, 20%. There you go, 20% reduction, sick. What else is AoEs? Uh, Storm the Heavens. Any of these AoEs you're getting hit by by Storm the Heavens, the ground ones, the lobbed attacks. AoEs, boom, major evasion, cracked. What else do we have? We have um, Thelms's bombs, so what people call bacon. Um, whenever he does that lobbed attack, uh, Thelms with a big red AoE, that's an AoE, major evasion, cracked. Uh, anything else? Like, I don't know, like, for the most part, what else are you really getting hit by? I mean, oh, let's go with, um, you know, the last minute where the fire comes out? Another AoE. Who would have thought? Look at that. Look, AoE right there. That big thing in the back, the red pink circle. That's an AoE. And the the big hit, that's like the, no, major evasion. Cracked. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and uh, so, what else we have? So, it's the Spirit Mender. You remember how I told him how he's giving you recov and he's healing you? Well, guess what else he's doing? He's taking 10% of your damage. Dang, ghost insane he's going crazy he's going crazy so we got elude we've got your armor we've got the ghost we're we're very tanky and what else do we have so when you're doing um vigor this is vigor right there well most people they'll be like oh use the green ones to better heal and then you're gonna, you're gonna look at the logs you're gonna look at the healing and she can tell you firsthand i have almost as much healing as the healers <laughs> so um that's crazy, right? You're like, I, you're a tank, bro. Like, you shouldn't be allowed to do this. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, if you give really good PA, or you just like, you know, not even think about the PA. If you keep 100% uptime on yourself, meaning if you have 100% uptime on, on Vigor, plus your Ghost, you're in a constant state of healing yourself, which is nice. It'll keep you sustained throughout the whole fight. So um, if you want if you want to have very good PA, just... Uh, make your number one priority 100% on myself because you know what 100% on yourself means it basically means you casted it you cast it at some like like you know 100% of the time meaning there's much more higher odds you hit someone else with it as well so uh you'll notice that your uptimes will go up even though you're like you're not think actively thinking about hitting people you're just focusing on yourself the PA will go up dramatically if you just ma try to maintain it on yourself. And uh, yeah, so these, your main four, like survivability, we got your damage reduction and we've got damage reduction and healing and sick. And, you know, here comes your scythe, your scythe, your big heal. Very nice. Uh, what's this ability right here? Uh, if anybody has seen it. So this is, this is race against time. So it's the psychic ability. It will make you move faster it'll give you major expedition for a brief amount of time and that's um it's nice it's um it, it, it like elude um you know we'll look at the other description here when you take area uh area damage aoe's you gain major expedition sick so in the event you're feeling a little slow you will you will cast this and you got our range interrupt we've got our two taunts and for excess uh, for other skills here we got uh, this little yellow grabby hand one is efficient purge. So you will only use that during the fire phase if somebody asks you to slot it. So I highly recommend if you're going to swap any of these abilities, drop in power, in my opinion, because it's probably going to be your weakest uptime. It is mine. So just put put it right there. Put efficient purge on there. Or you can use expunge and modify, uh, which will 
purge yourself only. And you notice that I don't have elemental blockade, so if they really need you to do Crusher on your back bar, uh, you can drop Race Against Time, I guess. And as for your ultis, why do I have a Destro ulti on there? I am a tank. <laughs> so, when you wear War Machine, you normally back bar it. And have you ever wear, worn War Machine or Master Architect and you've ulted on your front bar and, and you're like, wait a minute, that that didn't trigger my set. It's on my back bar. So what you do is you slot Destro ult on a sword and board weapon. You can't cast your ult on the front bar, so you won't mess up. And what's the other ult? Well, that's Pestilent Colossus. That's your Colossus as a crow. And what's the next one? Have you seen it before? That's the Res ulti. So I would highly recommend slotting that when you're progging. Uh, what's your CP? Uh, we got red CP, celerity, movement speed. Remember I talked about speed? More speed. What do we have here? Guess what? When you're sprinting, while you're being super fast, Sonic, mag recov, health recov. What else do we have? Rejuvenation, resources. Why not? Spirit mastery. If you're that, you're that OT, like if you get really good at OT, you're going to notice that you probably have some of the most reses compared to other people. And they're going to be like, oh man, somebody's going crazy on the reses. And you're like, that was me. But you're a tank. I know. So <laughs> Sick. Uh, blue CP. Okay. So unassailable, AOE damage reduction. And again, oh, remember how I talked about elude? Bang. Boom. More damage reduction from almost everything bulwark yeah uh, remember how i mentioned i have low resistances bulwark amazing duelist rebuff honestly these two can be whatever you want honestly they won't make that big a difference these are your main boys those are your main ones so we looked at the abilities we looked at the red cp here we go so again here's the gear uh we got all the stam all the whatever i talked about everything here that you're seeing where you're getting all your reco from all your tankiness uh, you know, you can you can try to do your own thing if you want. I uh, you know this is just what I do, and it's worked out fairly well. And if you are another class, because I know not not everyone's gonna be a crow. Not everyone's like uh, you know I don't expect everyone like force to like make a crow just because you know this guy said it's best uh, because like you know it's really good. Uh, but I do think. Uh, that you can do it on other classes. So just swap out some of the abilities. Uh, just look at look at it like you're another class. You're gonna still have the ones that are universal, but you know if you um, if you need um, let's say you're a warden, your scythe is polar wind. Well, if you're a DK, uh, you know green dragon blood. You're, if you're at the other niche ones, you know what your burst heal is. That's your burst heal right there. Uh, what's this ability? Uh, if you're a if you're a DK, that's your Igneous Shield. And if you're the Warden, um, what, what would that be? I don't know, your Betty Netch. Uh, the Armor Buff, if you're the Warden, you are you have Expansive. Uh, expansive Frost Cloak, whatever it's called. If you are the DK, you will norm normally have Balance, or you will have your Spikes, whatever it's called. Um, the, you know, I don't use it, but I use Balance. And uh, any other abilities uh, that I forgot to mention? Everything else is universal. So, uh, you know, just do whatever your equivalent is, and these bars will work for you. So um, I think I've covered the abilities, and I think I've covered the gear. So um, I, think, uh, I think I've covered most of the stuff. Uh, I, I will do a, cre a quick recap on this, this fight. And hopefully the idea has come across uh, as much as possible. And then we'll do some questions and then that's it. So I think um, I, I hope hopefully didn't miss anything very big or uh, very important. But yeah, so Lotus, again, uh, one last time. I'll, I'll repeat myself multiple times. Um, you know, right before Lotus spawns, the, the kite always happens. I stare near the boss. I scythe. I scythe. Just scythe, scythe. It's free. It's free. Or, or sometimes I don't even get hit. Sometimes that spot is the sweet spot right there. Just stand close. And there we go. Lotus in the back of the room. Back right. Boom. Taunted. Run away. Sprint away. Make a line. He's going to be in the middle. And there's the line right there. Perfectly stacked. As soon as he jumped away, I got proven wrong. But easy, right? And... I got the interrupt. Here we go. Pay attention to my timers. Boom. Easy. Got the got his interrupt. Oh, and if you're wondering where you get these timers from, the add-on. 
Uh, the add-on, I believe, is called Asylum Sanctorium... Um, what's it called? Tracker. Or Asylum Tracker. It's called Asylum Tracker. That's the add-on's name. Uh, and the other one uh, that you will see on the side left is Asylum Sanctorium status panel. That will tell me if Lotus will enrage. And also it tells you the little information. Like if you see that on the left side where it says St. Lotus the Pious, um, there's 24 seconds, but there's also a 23. Whenever that hits 30, he will teleport away. Sometimes it'll go to 45, and that's very rare. But 30, he ports. Just remember that. So if you ever see that number near 30, don't bother moving him like at all because he's about to teleport watch 27 28 29 30 what do we got here port right wait didn't port there you go okay he, sh he should be yeah he ported he ported so he ported he did his cone sick uh same thing make a line between lotus boom he stacked bada bing bada boom go back to ohms asap don't let don't let films be out there for too long I, again i'm keeping him far away because it doesn't matter in this group but it will in yours and i'm going to taunt films as soon as he's coming from the back uh or or the front of the room he's at the front um be aware films keep him close to ohms you don't want to keep him in the middle of the room you don't want to keep him on the other side because Felms jumps to the furthest person away, and if you have him in the middle and your healers are not in the right spots, per se, it'll jump to your tank healer. You don't want that to happen. So make sure he's close to Ohms, like he is now, like around this vicinity here, by the base of his tail, in that general line there. And again, make a line between Lotus. There you go. Made the line. He's stacked. Boom. Easy. Uh, there you go. He, and same idea. I'm looking at my timers. Look at the bolts. Soon means now. Boom. Blast, boom. All the timers are gone. Lotus is stacked. We're not worrying. Thumbs is in the back. I'm going to taunt him in a moment. Someone is going to get hit. My bad. And there we go. Easy. Uh, just like that. So uh, the whole fight will play out the same way. Just this is your playground. You're moving very fast. I will post the gear again, once again. But um, I think uh, we'll called this there um let's do i think some questions if there's any i feel like i talked a lot uh, and i might have missed anything so are there any questions or things you think um you know i didn't mention or anything like that from anyone that's still here so or anything that you might may need recapped <laughs> like uh no, no hi, no. hi um when do you block or oh you don't block? um yeah, okay, so uh, the only times I block is Ohm's jumps, basically. Like, that's the only only time. And the only, oh, I guess I guess the only other time is if Felms or Lotus is enraged, start blocking their hits, because eventually they'll start doing so much damage that you die, uh, like, unblocked. So um, those are the only hits. Those are only the only big hard hitters is Ohm's jumps if you're getting jumped on, on by him, because uh, you don't want to get pancaked. If you do get pancaked, though, like unblocked you most likely won't die because you have so much aoe mitigation you'll get put to like 30 or like to like 2k but um uh, i found instances where i barely live so block a uh ohms jumps if you're in the center and uh any enrage hits but other than that lotus and films do squats <laughs> like uh you'll, you'll see that i take very little damage from them so but uh good question um Anything else? Anybody have a... Thank you. Yes, no problem. Um, any other questions? Um, maybe. If you don't need anything, then uh, we're good, I think. Uh, it looks like I'm doing it crispy clean here, but trust me, this took me many, 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 many pulls to get down, and I still miss interrupts, and I still occasionally die. So... Yeah, don't worry. You won't be perfect at the start. This is the hardest roll. Has one of the highest ceilings in this game. Honestly, I don't think anything even comes close. Look at the three other supports in this. And, you know, they, they can do very well. Uh, like, But, like, OT is, like, there. it's, like, the the one you think about when it's, like, the OT carried your group. It, it, you'll, you'll say, right? Like, and then comes your tank healer. Your tank healer's uptimes? Dang. They were immaculate and then we got uh your uh, who comes next i guess your group healer is like well, okay thank you for the heals thank you for your service main tank sleeper so if you can get this off tank roll you're gonna be uh, yeah you're gonna be the giga chad so 
Uh, congratulations. You are hardened veterans in uh, off-tanking Asylum Sanctorium. 